you, uh, Count Corley. Um, there's no question but that people with disabilities face some of the greatest challenges in this country, and it's, it's a very poor reflection on the political system in this country that that is still the case. There's some 13.5% of people overall who have disabilities. That's about 640,000 people. Um, and this group is at a significantly greater risk of uh, poverty and exclusion and unemployment uh, because of their disability. And that shouldn't be the case, and it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, I, like many others in this House, will have seen the primetime programme last uh, Tuesday night in RTE, where we heard from a family who, I suppose, really challenged everybody watching the programme and most particularly challenged the government in relation to their failure to address the very basic needs of that family. We saw Darren Milne and uh, his partner Gillian Bulger, who have twin boys with autism, and they have another child as well. And they spoke about how they went through an entire year with any, without any support whatsoever. They had no school placement, uh, they had no home tuition, and uh, both of the parents had to stay at home in order to care for their two children with autism. And that's how bad the situation was. But not only that, um, Darren himself spoke very poignantly and emotionally about what that actually meant for the family, apart from the huge emotional and physical and mental drain that that caused them. It meant that uh, Darren had to st spend long periods away from his work. Luckily, he was with, he's with Dublin Bus and that was facilitated. But he had to spend long periods away from work without an income, um, falling behind with all their bills, uh, getting into uh, mortgage difficulty. They spoke about all of this in public. Shocking that they had to do that. Uh, and the impact of all of that on their mortgage and the fact that they were f facing home repossession. And all of that because of the state's failure to provide basic health and education services for their two children who have autism. And that's a scandal by any standard. It's something that this government should hang its head in shame about. We talk a lot about equality and inclusion but this is the hard face of the lack of action by government and the lack of priority being given to the whole area of disability and particularly for those uh, people with autism. Uh, the twins' mother spoke about having to fight for everything. And not only was she exhausted from caring for the children, but she was exhausted from having to fight for every single service uh, that they needed. And this story, of course, is replicated many, many times all around the country. And there is no doubt, as I say, that many families face what is, in effect, a postcode lottery when it comes to accessing uh, school places, or accessing uh, the very basic kind of uh, therapeutic services that simply do not exist in many of our, our regions. And those twin denials of basic services result, of course, in, an, in a denial of those children's basic human rights. And this government should be ashamed of that. We also know from As I Am, the very good um, advocacy organisation working in this area, who have drawn attention to these shortcomings on a regular basis. And indeed, I want to also acknowledge Graham Manning, who has done so much work in identifying the fact that there's a dearth of data and information about this. And the basic thing is that if those if you don't measure things, then those things don't matter. And that's very much the case in relation to this. We have a number of amendments, uh, and I hope that Fianna Fáil will accept the amendments to strengthen their, what I would uh, regard as a very good and comprehensive motion, which I hope they will give effect to in the budget negotiations. Thank you.